Welcome to another video. This beautiful problem is from a Korean mathematics competition from the year 2000. So this question is 24 years old. And the mission is to find all real values of x that are going to satisfy this equation where you have 2 to the x plus 3 to the x minus 4 to the x plus 6 to the x minus 9 to the x is equal to 1. What I would do if this was a competition and it was just the, it was one answer that I needed, I was just to just start guessing because it looks like I can do some arithmetic and the most important culprit in questions like this is the number 0. If I plug in 0 for x, I'm going to get 2 to the 0 which makes it 1. So everything is going to be 1 as long as x is equal to 0. So that's going to give me 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1. Clearly, that's equal to 1 because you have 3 positives and 2 negatives, all 1s. Okay, the next most likely culprit is going to be 1. So we found a solution. x equals 0 is a solution. Okay, what about x equals 1? If I plug in 1 here, this is going to be 2 to the 1 would be 2, so every number would be what it is. I'm going to have 2 plus 3, that gives me 5. 5 minus 4 is 1. 1 plus 6 is 7. 7 minus 9 is negative 2, but this is not negative 2, so 1 does not work. So you might try 2, maybe, or you might try negative 1 and deal with some fractions. They might all resolve into 1. Well, you keep trying, but you see the problem is all real x. So it's possible that the answer is not an integer that you can easily plug in. It might be some irrational number. Okay, so there has to be a way to find all possible solutions. Let's get into the video. So after observing this problem for a while, you're going to notice that everything on the board contains 2 or 3. What if that's the path we need to follow? What if we need to rewrite all of these numbers in terms of 2 and 3 and see if we can do some manipulations like this? This is 2 to the x plus 3 to the x minus, this is 2 squared, so it might as well be 2 to the x squared, right? This is going to be 2 to the x times 3 to the x. That's how you write 6 to the x, right? Minus 9 to the x, which is 3 to the x squared. Ah, this is tight. Equals 1. I hope you can see it. I'll rewrite it. I rewrote it and everything is now written in terms of 2 and 3. Just to make things look clean, we can use letters to replace this, right? So let's say we say let this be A and let this be B. So all the 2 raised to the power x will be A and 3 raised to the power x will be B. It's going to look cleaner. So we have, can we do some factoring? At this point, what we're looking for is a way to make a conclusion from what we have, although it doesn't look promising at all. Now, I tried a different way, just going ahead and factoring this. What I noticed was that I got something that was going to work for me, but it would be very difficult for me to justify it in this video. So I tried to look for something that is easily justifiable. So what I'm going to do is collect everything to one side and see if factoring will become even smarter than what I'm doing, okay? Maybe completing the squares because I see two squares and I see A, B here, I see A, I see B, so it's promising. So I'm going to collect everything to this side so that what I have is going to be, when this moves over, it becomes positive, so I'm going to have A squared, um, I have A squared, this becomes positive B squared, and then I have minus A, minus B. This becomes minus AB. 
And because this 1 is already on this side, it stays at positive 1 equals 0. So what can I do with this? I can make this into two different quadratic expressions and do completing the squares for these two, these two. This guy is going to be surplus, but I'm going to find use for it. This guy too will be surplus, but it's going to be a balancing number. Okay, so in order to make completing the squares easy, I also learned this from number theory class. Well, I'm not going to be doing four, I'll be doing two here. So I'm going to multiply everything by two so that I'm going to have, let's do it here. I'm going to have 2a squared plus 2b squared minus 2a minus 2b minus 2ab plus 2 equals 0. Now see how magical this turns out. So what we're going to have is 2a squared, but I don't want to do minus 2a. Okay, no, I'm going to take one of these 2a squareds. I'm going to use just one of them. So I have a squared. So I just took one of these. I'm going to combine it with this minus 2a. This is algebra, the beauty of algebra. That's it. Now I'm going to do the same thing for b plus b squared. I'll combine it with this minus 2b. Now you notice that I left one of the a squared here and one of the b squareds here. So I'm going to use both of them now and say plus a squared plus b squared. So I have all the a squareds and b squareds used up and I have this minus 2ab sitting here, minus 2ab. And then I have plus 2 equals 0. Now, How is this useful? Something is already obvious. This is what we call a minus b squared. That's what I was looking for. Because this is a square, I know it's going to be non-negative, okay? The worst that I can get here is a zero. I can get a negative number. And on the right hand side, I'm going to have plus two here equals zero. What can we do with this? Well, we can do completing the squares. If you complete the squares for anything like this, remember how we complete the squares. We're going to divide this coefficient by 2. We get 1, and we say this is going to be a minus 1 squared. But because we have completed the square, we have increased the value of this because we have added 1. We need to subtract that 1. The same thing for this one. It's going to be b minus 1 squared, but we have to subtract the excess 1 we generated by squaring. Right? Now look at what we have. Based on what we have, minus 1, minus 1, plus 2 is going to cancel out. What is left is basically a minus 1 squared plus b minus 1 squared. Hey, there's a plus sign here. Plus a minus b squared. And this is gone. And this is equal to 0. And this is the end of all the struggle because you can draw conclusions from here. Now, whenever you add stuff together, you may get zero. But if everything you're adding together is not negative, you're adding only positive numbers together, you can never get zero. Now look, this cannot be negative because it's a square. This cannot be negative, it's a square. This cannot be negative, it's a square. So. Everything you are adding together can never be zero unless each of these is a zero in itself. So, each term must be equal to zero. Therefore, you can go here and say, if this is equal to 0, therefore, a minus 1 equals 0, which implies a equals 1. Go here. b minus 1 equals 0, which implies b equals 1. And here, a minus b must be equal to 0, which implies a equals b. Well, you already can see that here. So everything is justified. A equals B equals 1. And that's the only solution we can get here. So A equals B equals 1 implies 
that 2 to the x equals 3 to the x equals 1, which implies that x is equal to 0. Leave a comment in the comment section. I know here there might be alternative ways of showing what I just did, but this one is a good one. I had one, actually, but I would have had to talk a lot to justify it, and then it might not be perfect, but this one is perfect. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.